In this video, we're going to look at why different trigonometric functions have got different signs in different quadrants. When we first started learning about trigonometry, we were introduced to sine, cos and tan as ratios of sides in a right angle triangle. This concept is known as trigonometric ratios. Suppose we've got a right angle triangle. Here's the angle theta. The side opposite the right angle is known as the hypotenuse. The side opposite the angle theta is known as the opposite side, and the side next to the angle theta is the adjacent side. Using these labels, we also learn to memorize the ratios sine, cos, and tan using the acronym SOCATOA. One of the limitations, though, of defining sine, cos, and tan this way using right angle triangles was that we could only work with acute angled right triangles. We couldn't work with anything beyond that. For example, we couldn't work with obtuse angle triangles. Therefore, to overcome this, we're now going to define sine, cos, and tan using a circle. This is the concept of trigonometric function, which is what we're going to be exploring in this video. Before we get started, we need to understand how to locate different size angles on the circle. Unlike true bearings, where when we specify directions, we begin at north and rotate clockwise, for trigonometric functions, the positive horizontal x-axis is the starting point, and that's where theta begins at zero degrees. Rotation in the anti-clockwise direction is deemed to be positive, and rotation in the clockwise direction is deemed to be negative. So let's look at how to locate the following angles on the circle. The first angle, we've got theta 1 is equal to 60 degrees. Now this is a positive angle, so we're going to start at theta is equal to 0 degrees and rotate anti-clockwise for 60 degrees. And this point here corresponds to the angle theta 1, 60 degrees. The next angle, we've got theta 2 is equal to 120 degrees. Again, this is a positive angle. So we're going to begin at 0 and rotate anti-clockwise for 120 degrees. So this point here corresponds to the angle theta 2 of 120 degrees. Next, we've got the angle theta 3, which is equal to 300 degrees. Again, this is a positive angle. So we're going to begin at 0 and rotate anti-clockwise for 300 degrees. And that's going to take us to this point. So this point, theta 3, corresponds to 300 degrees. Next, we've got the angle theta 4, which is 450 degrees. Now, 450 degrees is greater than 360 degrees or one revolution. So what we need to do is we first need to rotate a total of 360 degrees. In addition, to make up the 450, we need to go a further 90 degrees. So this point here will correspond to the angle theta 4 of 450 degrees. Next, we've got the angle theta 5 being equal to negative 30 degrees. Now, this is a negative angle, so we're going to start at 0, but this time we're going to rotate in the clockwise direction for 30 degrees, and that's going to take us to this point. So this point corresponds to theta 5, negative 30 degrees. And lastly, we've got the angle theta 6, which is equal to negative 270 degrees. Again, this is a negative angle, so we're going to begin at zero, but we're going to rotate clockwise for 270 degrees, and that's going to take us to the exact same point as theta 4. So that point also corresponds to theta 6, negative 270 degrees. So let's now look at how we can define sine, cos, and tan using the circle. Suppose we've got a circle of radius r, and on this circle we've got a point p with coordinate x, y. We're going to join the center of the circle o to the point p such that the angle between the x-axis and the ray o p is theta. Next, we're going to drop a perpendicular from p to the x-axis so that we now have got a right angle here. And since P has got coordinate x, y, this means that this point on the x axis is going to be x, and this point on the y axis is going to be y.
So if we look at this right angle triangle, this means that the length of this side of the triangle will be equal to y, and the length of this side of the triangle will be equal to x. And since the radius of the circle is r, and the radius is the same as the hypotenuse of this triangle, the length of the hypotenuse will also be r. So from this right angle triangle here, we can use it to derive sine, cos, and tan. So sine theta being opposite on hypotenuse will be y divided by r. Cos theta being adjacent on hypotenuse will be x divided by r. And tan theta being opposite on adjacent will be y divided by x. So we're now going to look at how we can use these definitions to evaluate sine, cos, and tan for angles of any magnitude. For our first example, we're going to write down the values of sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta for the given diagram. In this diagram, we've got the angle theta that is in quadrant 1, the radius of the circle is 5, and the point corresponding to the angle theta has got coordinate 3, 4. Yes, we can straight away write down the values of sine theta, cos theta, and tan theta using the definitions we've just derived. But because I want you guys to understand better, I'm going to go the long way and just show it to you using right angle triangles. So from the information here, I'm going to construct a right angle triangle such that this side is given by the y coordinate, which is 4, and this side is given by the x coordinate, which is 3. Since the radius of the circle is 5, this means that the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle is going to be 5. Then using the definition sine theta is equal to y on r, we're going to get sine theta being equal to 4 over 5. Cos theta is equal to x on r, that's going to be equal to 3 on 5. And tan theta being equal to y on x, that's going to be equal to 4 on 3. Now, what we see is that in quadrant 1, all our trigonometric ratios, sine, cos, and tan, are all positive. Our next example, we're going to do the same thing, but this time the angle theta is in quadrant 2. I'm going to construct a right angle triangle again. Here, the y value corresponding to this triangle is going to be 7, while the x value corresponding to this triangle is going to be negative 24. Since we're in the second quadrant, the x values are all negative. And because the radius of the circle is 25, our hypotenuse of the triangle will be 25. Then using the definition sine theta is equal to y on r, we're going to get sine theta being equal to 7 on 25. Cos theta being x on r is going to be equal to negative 24 on 25. And tan theta being equal to y on x is going to be equal to 7 over negative 24 or just negative 7 on 24. Now what we want to observe here is that in the second quadrant, only sine is positive whilst cos and tan are negative. Our next example, we've got the angle theta that is in quadrant 3. This circle has got a radius of 13 and the point corresponding to the angle theta has coordinate negative 5, negative 12. So we're going to construct a right angle triangle again. This side of the triangle corresponds to y is equal to negative 12 whilst this side of the triangle corresponds to x is equal to negative 5. And since the radius is 13, the hypotenuse of the triangle is also going to be 13. Then using the definition sine theta is equal to y divided by r, sine theta will be equal to negative 12 on 13. Cos theta is equal to x divided by r, that's going to be equal to negative 5 on 13. Tan theta is equal to y on x, we're actually going to get negative 12 divided by negative 5. And because both are negative, that will cancel out, giving us a positive 12 on 5. So we see that in Q3, only tan is positive, while sine and cos are negative. Our last example, we now have got theta in quadrant 
4. The radius of the circle is 17 and the point corresponding to the angle theta this time is 8, negative 15. We're going to repeat the same process, constructing a right angle triangle here. This side of the triangle corresponds to the y value of negative 15 and this side corresponds to the x value of 8. And because the radius is 17, the hypotenuse of the triangle will be 17. Applying the definition, sine theta is equal to y on r, that's going to be equal to negative 15 on 17. Cos theta is equal to x on r, that's going to be equal to 8 on 17. And tan theta being equal to 1x, we're going to get negative 15 over 8. And what we see is that in quadrant 4, only cos is positive, while sine and tan are negative. So in summary, we can now conclude that sine theta is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 2, cos theta is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 4, and tan theta is positive in quadrant 1 and quadrant 3. And to help us memorize this, we can use the acronym ALL STATIONS TO CENTRAL. What that means is A for all, all trig ratios are positive in quadrant 1. S stands for sine, only sine is positive in quadrant 2. T for tan, only tan is positive in quadrant 3. And C for cos, only cosine is positive in quadrant 4. Thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you guys found it useful. For more videos on this topic or other topics, please do check out our channel. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe. We do release videos regularly and we would love to see you all in the next one. Bye for now.